and good afternoon and happy Lunar New Year of the sheep or the goat or the ram. I know it's confusing. I, one of my friends even created a new word. It's called Shigora. <laughs> anyway, happy new year and thanks for joining us for this uh, exhibition opening. And some of my friends uh, asked me, uh, even the artist himself, Wei Jia, asked me, why do you present an artist you know, for a solo show without even uh, we present him before? I answered in uh, once, actually three simple words. It's uh, intuition and spirit, spiritual resonance. Actually, just four words. Intuition and spiritual resonance. Uh, it all dated back to uh, last year when uh, art critic and professor Robert Morgan came to see Nanhai's February, last February show, Hobei Ren show, uh, last February. And when he returned to New York, he sent me the name of Wei Jia and he wrote, you should come to meet him. So I did. I, however, I wouldn't expect that my first meeting with Wei Jia started you know, with a conversation of the Tang Dynasty, Tang Dynasty poems instead of his paintings. When I, in getting to know this artist better, I got to know that you know, his strong attraction to traditional Chinese culture dated back to early years in Beijing when he studied with the legendary collector and scholar Zhang Boju and Pan Su. So 40 years after, after, you know, 40 years later, in the contemporary surroundings of New York, Wei Jia Wu still feels his spell time with the classic, classical Chinese poems. And also he would still practice calligraphy one and a half hours every day, almost every day. So uh, finally, I got the chance to uh, visit his New York studio. And I think one word, which one phrase, would best describe my uh, impression. That's Hua Ru Qi Ren. Hua Ru Qi Ren. The style is the man. His art is so deeply rooted in Chinese tradition, but at the same time, it's so contemporary. No matter no matter whether in the selection of uh, theme expression of concepts and so use of skills and application of materials. So I think this, this art really gives us a transcultural and also transcontextual experience for the viewers and best echoes Nanhai's mission of program, which is to present the highest quality of contemporary Chinese art that both reflect the unique aesthetics of Chinese tradition, but also at the same time transcending cultural and artistic boundaries with a contemporary sensibility. So anyway, I will leave this uh, introduction to uh, uh, of the exhibition and also the artist to the exhibition creator, Robert Morgan. But before I give the floor to uh, Dr. Morgan, I would like to still like to uh, formally introduce Dr. Morgan. Robert Morgan, PhD, writes frequently on the work of Chinese contemporary artists. He lives in New York City and teaches in the Graduate School of Fine Arts at Pratt Institute and the School of Visual Arts. Author of many books and exhibition catalogs, he's a painter and New York editor for Asian Art News and World Sculpture News. In 1999, he was given the first Akeli Award in Salamanca, Spain for his work in art criticism. In 2011, he was inducted into the European Academy of Science and Arts. He has curated over 80 exhibitions of modern and contemporary art in various galleries and museums worldwide. So Dr. Morgan, thank you very much for your outstanding curating and above all for your friendship and for your introduction of Wei Jia to me. Thank you. Now the floor is yours. <clears throat> Edward, thank you for that wonderful introduction, and I have to say it's a pleasure being with you. Nan High Gallery, I think, is doing an extraordinary job in terms of making its audience aware of the, uh, the classic tradition in Chinese painting, and uh, this is the perfect time for this to happen. Uh, China has gone through some 
very uh, moving times, to, to say the least. Uh, it's been a difficult previous century, and this, of course, has affected the art in recent years. That cause and effect relationship, I think, is extremely important to understand. That uh, the activity that we began to uh, sense in the early 80s in China, uh, going back to Wang Zhangping and his uh, Sichuan Dada and so forth, there were a number of artists who were really trying to uh, break out of a uh, tradition while at the same time holding on to a tradition. That paradox, I think, is much more familiar to the Chinese than it would be to uh, Westerners, how you hold something but at the same time are trying to break free of it. And I think that the political circumstances uh, necessitated this kind of action. And uh, as a result, we have now a very strong resurgence of interest in ink painting, uh, in Chinese ink in particular, which implies not only the traditional means of calligraphy, but also performance and uh, forms of painting that are directly indebted to the art of the past and to the calligraphy of the past. It seems as though the separation is not so important from the Chinese point of view, although Westerners tend to see more of a separation than they do. Anyway, it's a great pleasure for me to be invited to curate this exhibition of uh, the great artist and my great friend, uh, Wei Jia, uh, Wei Jia uh, who has, uh, in fact, had a, an incredible growth uh, in his career over the last uh, 20, 25 years or so. Let me just briefly say that Wei Jia was important in terms of, uh, at the outset, in terms of his relationship to Kafa, the, the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, uh, with his uh, wife, the artist of Lin Jen, who we're also delighted to have here in the audience with us. Uh, they offered a point of view that was really forward-reaching, but at the same time, as uh, Edward Gui pointed out, uh, not only forward-reaching, but uh, clearly aware of the traditions from which they were emerging. And uh, the poetry for Wei Jia has always been as important as the painting. Remember that the, the three modes of the highest arti artistic expressions in China is calligraphy, poetry, and painting. And this is a position that uh, Wei Jia has held to over the years, beginning in his years at the Central Academy of Fine Arts in the early 80s. In 1985, he and his wife, uh, Lin Yan, who was also a, an exemplary student uh, at the uh, Central Academy of Fine Arts, where both of her parents taught, who were both uh, important artists in China and her grandfather before that. She comes from a very important artistic family. Anyway, the point is that uh, they came to the Northeast and uh, uh, both attended Bloomsburg College in, in Pennsylvania, uh, where they received their uh, MFA degrees after their uh, initial uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts at uh, Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing. So they have the splendor and excitement of both being trained in their homeland as well as in the United States. Uh, eventually, they, after graduation, uh, Wei Jia and his wife moved to Southern California for three years, it was a bit, three or four years, very difficult time because of the Tiananmen Square situation in 1989. Uh, Lin Yan and I were talking about this uh, earlier this afternoon at lunch. Eventually, they decided that if they were really going to evolve <coughs> in terms of their work as artists and to evolve their careers simultaneously that they would have to come to New York City, which they did. And they have been more or less uh, dividing their time between New York City and Beijing. Uh, as uh, we were all together over in Brussels uh, two or three months ago, 
or at Shiloh Blinyans, and we were talking about this connection between Brooklyn and Beijing, which a number of important artists, including uh, Chai Gu Chang and uh, uh, Xu Bing, uh, and Wen Da Gu, and a number of Chinese uh, artists, uh, are engaged in this kind of uh, bilateral movement back and forth, and it has clearly affected their work. Uh, these, uh, this generation of Chinese artists, of which Wei Jia is very much a part, uh, really understand on some intuitive level so deeply their tradition, as Edward Lee pointed out. And that's such an important point to understand, that they understand the tradition so deeply. But yet at the same, the same time, they're willing to make this extraordinary effort in terms of coming into a global context. Uh, by that I mean they are uh, learning Western art and applying it to what they know. Now, one of the exceptional cases in Wei Jia is that he has kept to the tradition uh, in a very open-minded way because obviously he's spending a great deal of time in the northeast of the United States and so he's aware of what is going on. He absorbs it, he digests it, he re reflects upon it, he uh, thinks about it, he mulls over it, and the result is some extraordinary painting. And this is why I recommended that uh, Wei Xia have an exhibition here, because of the firm traditional roots of ink painting that are associated with Nan Hai, and the fact that he was a real leader in terms of bringing this tradition into the 21st century. I have mentioned this to Wei Xia and uh, also to Michelle Lowe, who are just delighted to have her here uh, this afternoon uh, from New York. Very important curator. Michelle, it's so great that you could come, really. It's just a pleasure having you here. Uh, but the, the point is that we've got really a, a first-rate artist here. We've got uh, an artist who uh, thinks and works and feels. You know, one of the things that has always impressed me about Wei Jia is there are artists, from the American point of view, and I remember this going through the educational system here, there are those who are intelligent, and then there are those who are creative, okay? As if somehow there is a major split between the two. Uh, that split, I have to say, folks, is not understood in China. That if you are highly intelligent, you have to be highly sensitive and sensible, okay? There is no such thing as a separation between the two. It is what we might call, using the English word, elegance. And that is precisely how I know and understand Wei Jia as an artist, as a friend, and as a absolutely first-rate uh, thinker of his time who engages in this triumvirate of painting, calligraphy, and paint and uh, poetry. Uh, I, I hope I haven't underplayed his reputation too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the uh, kindly remark, and I really love the word, you know, you know elegance, really elegance. You know. And also, I have another guest from New York to introduce you today, so Miss Michelle Lu, just flying uh, fly from New York two hours ago. So, I was joking with them, you, know, you bring us the greatest artists from New York, we bring you the sunny weather in California. <laughs> so, welcome. And, Michel Lu is, uh, is a friend of uh, Vijay and also is a New York-based art consultant. She was born and raised in Shanghai and educated in the United States. And Lu specializes in organizing art fairs and group exhibitions. She advises individual and institutional collectors about contemporary Chinese art, contemporary arts. Most recently, Lu was guest curator of the exhibition Tales of Two Cities, New York and Beijing which is a group exhibition of Chinese and Western contemporary artists at the Bruce Museum. And the show was featured in the uh, New York Times in July 2014. And also, he was the, she was the guest curator of Oil and Water, Reinterpreting Ink, a three-person exhibition of contemporary Chinese-American artists Zhou De Su and Wei Jia, who is here today, and Zhang Hongtu at the Museum of Chinese, American, Chinese in America in New York in the year of 2014. 
She was a member of the founding team of Asian Contemporary Art Fair New York 2007 and 2008, and from 2003 and 2005, she was co-publisher of the magazine Arts Asia Pacific. So welcome, Michelle, and thank you for flying to moderate this uh, conversation. Now the floor is yours. First, I would like to thank Edward for inviting me here to see this fantastic space and a great opportunity to see the exhibition. I'm so pleased to be in company with two dear friends, Bubba Morgan and true Renaissance man. He's an art critic, writer, and artist, and poet. And we are a very dynamic and complex and unique artist. And this exhibition, I just took a quick look. I think it contains the most comprehensive body of work of Weijia in the recent years. And I think it's a really wonderful introduction to the Bay Area of this artist Weijia. So I'll come to the first question to Robert. Consider the intricacy between the ink tradition and the contemporary practice. It's been an ongoing dialogue and it has drawn a lot of tension in many institutions. So recent years at the Boston MFA, there was an exhibition on fresh ink, which they invited 10 artists from China in dialogue with the MFA's Asian permanent collection. And the last year, the very thought-provoking exhibition Ink Now at the Metropolitan Museum. So how do you view this particular exhibition compared to these you know, institutional um, larger scale um, group exhibitions? Is it, do you view that as an extension, as a continuing? And can you elaborate on that? Uh, I feel that the current exhibition of Wei Jia is an extension of both of the exhibitions in Boston and the Metropolitan Museum of Fine Art. I did not see the exhibition in Boston, but I, I went several times to the one at the Metropolitan. I had lunch with a curator. We talked at great length about the, the exhibition. He was heavily criticized for that show uh, for a number of reasons that I think were not uh, correct uh, historically or in terms of the uh, intention that he was trying to deal with. Uh, he was focusing a great deal on the con concept or conceptual aspect of ink which I think is true. In the United States, we have a movement called conceptual art that emerged in the late 60s and uh, has e evolved through the 1970s and so forth, where the idea was isolated from the material or the object. But what we have to understand that uh, through ink in China, there is, again, no separation between the material, the object, and the concept. And in fact, uh, what I have tried to show in this exhibition and tried to explain in this exhibition is that uh, Wei Jia is holding forth in terms of the concept and that is inextricably related to the poetry of the Tang Dynasty. We were talking, uh, Edward, you and I, about uh, uh, Tu Fu, uh, you know, in, in relation to uh, the, the work of uh, Wei Jia. And I, I think that when you talk about this kind of poetry in China, it's very much conceptual. And therefore, there is a language component, and as I've expressed, there is also the fact that uh, Wei Jia, in contrast to many of his colleagues, is writing calligraphy every day for at least an hour, an hour and a half, whatever he feels. Uh, he's, uh, he's really uh, functioning, performing internally and uh, overtly as a, uh, as a master Chinese artist. And I think that uh, maybe to get back to your question, Michelle, I, th I think that this is the part that maybe was not clearly understood in the exhibition in, in New York. That, that in fact, you can be uh, exemplary in terms of experimentation, but also very much within a classic tradition. And I think the problem that we have here is that uh, the Americans want to make these separations rather than these conjunctions in terms of where we have to understand the paradoxical overlay of which his art, uh, Wei Jia's art, is very much a part. That leads to my next question to Wei Jia. Um, you know, Robert already introduced, you studied uh, Chinese calligraphy and landscape painting at a very young age, and then you went to Central Academy of Fine Arts studying Western oil painting. After that, you came here and studied MFA program, right? 
So how does the various of different academy training affect your work and, and influence your subject matter, choice of subject matter? And have you been trying to, in, uh, how, if, if so, how do, how do you incorporate that? It's probably a larger question. Yeah. <laughs> It will take uh, more time to talk about this. It's like my, my whole history. Um, make, it, make it in short, make everything in short. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing uh, when getting older, like middle age, I still can uh, pursue uh, my dream from my youth. Um, when I started Chinese traditional painting and calligraphy and poetry, um, very early um, age, 14 years old, and uh, it tells me a lot. Uh, even now, I still use um, I still use the, the the way of they're doing the landscape painting, like a color wash uh, several times for the mountain. Uh, I still um, use the technique uh, to mount the paper. Uh, that's all from my experience in my early time. Uh, after I, you know, I got into the Academy of Fair Arts in China, uh, I had very strict um, European style training for real, realistic uh, style. Um, that made me uh, clear to give up realistic uh, style. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I'm, I was very good at that time, uh, I know I am not crazy about copy or representing the things already exist or already you can see. Um, and also, the good thing is that I started oil painting, then I know my best choice is not oil pigment. And I finally found the, some materials very, very close to me, close to a tradition, close to nature, uh, close to the way I, I live. Um, I, I think it's all helped. All, all my experience helps me. Uh, now I'm working, working on my own, own way, maybe very narrow, not the big road, uh, like uh, everybody walk like traffic. And, you know, I'm working on a thin line and balanced with the bar, maybe West and, and Western and Eastern culture, just like that. Um, that's what I'm doing. But uh, although the probably the road or lines are thin, but it's my my road, and nobody else can can just parallelly uh, going. So um, since you mentioned that maybe I have a question about the both of you. Let's talk about your this this technique you've developed. It's a quite distinctive, unique technique. Mm -hmm. And you start from calligraphy. From that, you tear them up and mount them and mount fragments of them onto the canvas and repeat them, you know, until at some point you think it's ready. Um, I saw the exhibition, and if you look at from Vijay's earlier work, relative earlier work in 2008 or 2007, the calligraphy or the words are quite visible at the time. You can still, even though overall it doesn't make an essay, but each word has meaning. And the most recent word, the drawings, where you actually, these calligraphy or these words become unrecognizable. So is that an outcome that you intended, or does that come as a surprise to you? And maybe from your point of view, as a curator or critic, what do you think about this transformation? I like the transformation, but you respond directly, Wei Zhang. Well, um, I think they, they all come naturally. I don't follow what's going on uh, outside of me, and uh, I have my own own life, own art, and all around. Um, I have two parallel uh, activities in my daily life. One is to study Chinese tradition uh, in the standard way, standard rules, uh, like uh, calligraphy, 
uh, like uh, poetry I would read, still read, and uh, essays I, I, I read and, and uh, translate in my own way and uh, share with my friends and my students in China. And this is the one way. I think more I know the past, more, the more I know today. Uh, the more I know myself, uh, the more I know other people. Um, something like that. Um, Another way is um, my painting. Um, I try to make, make it short. Um, I try to, uh, you know, I appreciate the uh, older, the older of a tradition, the older of a traditional art and calligraphy. Um, but uh, I break it up. I I paint it, started from the, the calligraphy and break the character away and build up the new um, new order. Then I appreciate the new order. The whole process is just, uh, for me, it's just like that. The old painting, not old painting, but uh, the, the work um, from last year, a year before last year, is more trying to show the, the character, Chinese calligraphy. Uh, something related to the calligraphy, the shape, the, the form, uh, the space, um, you know, etc. But the new one, uh, the new series uh, I, I have been working on, I already uh, finished like 29 pieces uh, since the last uh, July. It's all about the older, just like I mentioned, the, the older, the new older, from the old older to the new older. Uh, that's the, the difference from the one before. If, if I could put this in a historical context, because I think it will help explain what uh, Wei Jia is, is doing. Uh, there are three other Chinese artists that I would like to cite in terms of this characterless uh, painting. In other words, when we talk about characterless, we're talking about removing the meaning of the character visibly from what we are seeing on the surface. And when you go to the gallery downstairs, you will see uh, a, a group of these paintings uh, relative to the series that Wei Zhao was talking about, where in fact we don't read the actual character. Or if we do read it, it's with a great deal of difficulty because it has been obscured, it's been dissembled, in some cases it's been deliberately removed uh, through the gestural procession of the strokes. Uh, the three uh, artists I want to mention, mention are uh, Gu Wenda. Uh, Gu Wenda had this idea, uh, going back a number of years, that he wanted to take uh, alphabets and calligraphy, particularly from calligraphic countries, I mean like the Middle East and Far East and Southeast Asia and so forth, where in fact uh, he would mix up these uh, characters so that they would be unreadable, but they would be beautifully, beautifully uh, rendered, okay, in a relatively large scale or medium to large scale. He did other things as well, but I just want to emphasize that one fact that he was kind of bringing together a united nations of different kinds of calligraphic strokes into a single language that essentially was unreadable. Uh, the other artist is Xu Bing, who is uh, reasonably well known in the United States. I think he's had some exposure here in the Bay Area. Uh, Xu Bing started using, uh, back uh, I believe in the 90s, he began working with Chinese characters, but they were actually English words, okay? And there are a number of these, when you first see them, you say, oh, that's Chinese, and then you look carefully, you can see that in fact he has actually written English words within the strokes. One of his best known works, however, is called Book from the Sky, which was done in the early 80s. And that was shown at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the exhibition that uh, Michelle mentioned called Ink Art. And that one is completely in Chinese strokes, but no character. And there are literally hundreds and thousands of characters in this scroll that drops down from the ceiling. Hundreds and thousands of characters that are unreadable. Okay, but the strokes are perfect. Now this is a little different than Wendagu, who was borrowing from other countries. This is just within the context of Chinese calligraphy. The third that I want to mention is a, an artist who's a bit older who lives in Guangzhou, 
And uh, he's a very important calligrapher, probably the premier calligrapher now in China. His name is Wang Dongling, and he was also included in the exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum. And his idea is to move from calligraphy, that is, from the character strokes, which he can do. I watched him do the Tao Te Ching, for example, when he was at the Metropolitan, which was a great thrill for me to see, because he's working with large brushes on the floor, uh, with large sheets of Chuan paper. Uh, magnificent to see. But now he's interested in removing the character completely, but keeping the strokes. And he feels very simply, if we're dealing with glass and steel skyscrapers in Shanghai that are going up so high, we have to think about calligraphy that can match that in terms of this new architecture. In other words, uh, we have to have something that has the strength of the feeling. We have to go directly for the feeling of the stroke, which is maybe of the three closer to what uh, Wei Jia is trying to do. Now, from my point of view, I think that what we're seeing in these scrolls, which you will see downstairs by Wei Jia, is just extraordinary because he is the one that is really, as I mentioned earlier, holding the tradition, but carefully, carefully attending to how those strokes are being made and just letting it happen. But he can let it happen because he knows it so well. That is the artistry in this work of Wei Jia. Uh, yes, my uh, may I add, I think I see a difference between Wei Jia's work and the other three artists. Of course, artists. of course there is. Um, one of them, to me, is that Wei Jia is very much interested in the painting process and the material. Right. So in a way, he is using calligraphy as an entry point, so that he asks the user to come into the conversation. When you first look at it, you say, oh, these are semi-recognizable symbols, so mm -hmm. I'm open to it. Once you're coming in, he's actually really working with a different layer of material papers and mm. colors mm. Um, and the different space and lighting. Yeah. That's so what I meant that he was, he was attending to the tradition. That's, that's what I, I, I mm -hmm. meant by that. He, right. Exactly. Uh, the tr tradition is always there, and as he just recently said so beautifully in this uh, paradoxical Chinese way, that the more he knows himself, the more he knows the other. Uh, the, the, the more he knows the past, the more he knows the present. I really think that that comment is so profound mm -hmm. as something that I really believe needs to z disseminate into Western culture, that idea. I think it's such an important point. Absolutely. Um, coming to the point about material, I think you have a very uh, profound affinity to the material paper. So that's the Xuan paper is in all your works. And it seems to me that's really you're honoring and inheriting the tradition. However, you are using different colors um, that's somewhat a little bit different than the traditional literary color tone, that more earthy color. You're using this very vibrant pink or orange, and that seems to be a little bit contrast. So can you talk a little bit about that? Two questions. One is the color, and another well, is the paper. Well, I, I think uh, <laughs> the question is yeah. in terms of paper, you're very much inherited tradition, but in terms of color, you're going, you're being more courageous and brave about it. Yeah, I will see the paper first. Uh, I love the shell paper, or the hand paper, Chinese uh, hand, handmade paper. Uh, one is the, the paper has its own story. And uh, also, it carries the, the whole Chinese culture, the history. Um, and also, this paper lasts longer, uh, at least over 1,000 years. Because uh, we have a collection in China, Forbidden City, the first calligraphy written by Lu Ji, uh, Xi Jin uh, Dynasty, uh, from 17, no, uh, 1,700 years ago. Okay. So the rice paper lasts longer, has a long life. Um, also, the material today still uses the same, same method, same way to make this kind of rice paper. It's very close to uh, nature. Uh, I, I choose the paper with a lot of fibers. It's really uh, intimacy, and you, can, you, you just love to touch it. Uh, and also, paper. Um, you know, in, in China, the history is they, uh, 
no any educated man uh, live without paper. Because you, you, you use the same paper to write anything. Uh, the poetry, the notes, uh, and the story, uh, essay, uh, even use the same paper doing the painting. So all, everything uses the same sheet of paper. So it's a different from the Western world. Um, and the, the, this paper uh, is translucent. It's a very, um, what I can see, uh, the character of Chinese, translucent, translucent not transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a jade. You know, the, the, the girl where Chinese girl where where the old lady where the jade. Uh, they have an in, in, interactive. Uh, people, the girl make the jade changing color, co more colorful. And the jade make uh, the girl's skin <laughs> or, or some beautiful, as they said. Uh, uh, the paper is almost the same. When in, in the old time, we, we call a scholarly family, we call the book smell family. Uh, it is, there was an in, interactive. Uh, I, I like this paper, and um, and also the important thing is that uh, you know I, I mentioned I, I, I love tradition. I, I love the standard. I love the best work of you know Chinese in the old time. But if I study, I still use a brush. I have to hold that in the in the old manner, a proper way. And if I use the ink, the, all the people will judge uh, the, the way you use it, wrong or right. I know the standard, but I don't want to follow this. Mm -hmm. I just, because I'm living today, I, I don't want to follow all the way they use. I try to find out something just different, but, uh, but I want to keep the spirit going. What I can do, the only the paper, if you, t if you see a Chinese uh, uh, traditional art web, you know, all about brush and the ink, nothing about the paper. Because the paper today is nothing much, not too much different from the older ones. So the paper I want to use as media to create a uh, new, to create a tradition, uh, maybe a new way of uh, Chinese tradition. Uh, I don't know if I can, I should call this way, but, but uh, New material. Uh, that's the main thing I want to want to do, and also I use that as a collage, because uh, um, everything related to the past. I always think about the fragment, uh, uh, fragment of uh, memory, fragment of past, a fragment of uh, history. Even the way I'm, I'm thinking is it's also a fragment. So I I love to use the you know, the paper, pieces of a small paper and play around and build up layers and layers. Uh, then you get close look, uh, you can feel it. Um, you feel the layers, you, you feel the translucent, uh, something like that. The color is, the second question is uh, my challenge to the traditional painting, the color they use, because the, all the color they have uh, uh, suggest, they have uh, uh, very limited. Yeah. Mountain, they only use certain, no more than six colors, no more than five colors. Uh, two green, two blue, maybe uh, you know, uh, another color. Um, so it's very, very limited. Uh, they just suggest tree, suggest a mountain with a color. But today, we are living a different world. We see different color. Uh, we, we are around the different. But I still love the color from nature. Uh, I love everything uh, natural. Um, not really, you know, you made it. Uh, it's very, uh, when you look at the magazine, you say, wow, you know, so shiny and so, you know, so jump out. But, uh, Artificial. Artificial, uh, commercial, industrial, and uh, it's already there too much. Um, I just like close to nature. Even my painting, um, just you see the, the, the black one. I want to do some painting. It's like, a, oh, that's the way it is. 
you know, it's not painted, it's not, uh, you know, just the way it is, look naturally. I think we have uh, time for one last question. Uh, I just want to add something. Perhaps some of you don't know what Chuang paper is. Uh, in China, the paper is made from the bark of the elm and the ground leaves of the mulberry tree. And uh, Wei Zhao is absolutely correct that uh, you can go back uh, 1,700 years and that paper still exists in some cases. Uh, but the point is that it's more uh, durable than most uh, canvas that is being used, for example, in Renaissance paintings. Keep, it, keep in mind, Renaissance paintings have only been around like five or six hundred years, but uh, 1,700 years of paper is something else. It's a sobering thought. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm curious that you have shared your insight as a curator and critic on how you look at Wei Jia's work. Uh, what about as a fellow artist? How do you, do you see a commonality of your work and his work? Oh, that's such, a, that's, that's such a, a, a great question, but a, a difficult question. Yeah. Maybe not so difficult. Uh, Wei John and I have talked about this. Uh, back in 1966, 67, I studied with a Japanese calligrapher by the name of Kongo Abe, and uh, he was extremely encouraging uh, to me. Uh, I had already more or less decided that I wanted to become a painter. And uh, then when I got to, when I finished my uh, MFA degree, which is called a Master of Fine Arts, uh, I had a professor in art history who taught Islamic art that interested me a great deal. And he said, listen, you know, you should really get a PhD. And I said, me, I'm an artist. I, how can I get a PhD? He says, you apply. Well, I did apply and I got the de degree and I've had a career as an academic as well as an artist, which is not as pure as Wei Jia. <laughs> However, I like to put it this way, that the kind of painting that I do is about the space of the gesture without the gesture. Okay? In other words, I, I internalize mentally the space of the gesture, and then that's what I paint. And I'm very interested in the Tao Te Ching of the fact that light and dark need each other in order for the, uh, in this case, in my case, the painting to be resolved. So if, if you look at a painting of mine, uh, it reflects and absorbs light at the same moment. And that absorption and reflection at the same moment is very close to the moment of being alive, which I think is also the moment of understanding nature to its fullest, which is uh, what I'm trying to do as a Westerner, but nowhere is near as good as Wei Jia. You've been very humble. <laughs> Thank you both. I Thank think everyone, much. maybe we're open yeah. to the audience for some Q&A. Anybody have questions for Wei Jiao? Hi. Um, in your current work, are you, where you're dis dissecting the calligraphy a little bit, is there still a character, a sense of one character? Are you working to grandiose by and the other thing so that's sort of a question the other thing is um in and this is not uh academically certified but i think in the kabbalah that each letter has a sort of story behind it so that was sort of the other side when you get down when you get down to the single character or one idea do you have this great narrative behind or a, not a great narrative but a narrative behind thank you um a few years ago, I, I, I studied the painting, uh, studied this series, uh, actually already over 10 years. Uh, I read really characters and in the old manner. And people always ask me what that means when they look at my painting. Mm. And uh, it doesn't matter from Western, uh, Western people or Chinese. The Chinese people look at the character, oh, yeah, I know this word. This is not my I, intention. I love calligraphy, not the meaning of the word. I love the calligraphy itself as a visual art. Mm. So I try to give, give up this meaning. Then I start seeing how to break this character up. But I still keep the space. Um, uh, the, the elegant, uh, the the way 
just try to find a way to keep the tradition, the spirit of traditional culture, but in a different way. Uh, that's what I do. For a new series, I actually I wrote and calligraphy and the character in a very standard way. <coughs> Starting sometimes with the color, sometimes just pure white, sometimes uh, gray. Uh, I started that way. This is the on the uh, layers of uh, uh, rice paper, shell paper already uh, mounted. Then I, after I finished the first, I tear them off. Not all of them, but uh, you know you have to make an arrangement. Everything is an arrangement. There was uh, so so much um, uh, you expect unexpected result. Controlled, uncontrolled. Then you put all of this back, and, and you know, back and forth, and back and forth, tear it off, and put it back, and tear it off. So uh, finally, the the process, um, the conversation. Um, then you start in a certain way. Uh, you find the new order build up. Because when I write, I still appreciate the traditional. Way. Then I tear it off. That start from. Um, you know, maybe um, I, I couldn't recognize when I teared off, and something uh, happened. I feel so happy. Sometimes I feel that's a disaster because uh, when you tear this, it's uncontrolled. It, uh, sometimes show the color or show the ink underneath of the paper. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so that's the uh, whole process. I'm really curious about the process of to make your work. So because you said you tear the papers, uh, recently there was a show at the Metropolitan uh, MoMA, it's uh, the cutouts by Matisse. Uh, when he, Matisse made the cutouts, he liked to like uh, some unexpected what he wanted to do. So he wanted to change here and there, and then reorganize, and then he finally he picks he what he wants. That uh, the show he the process uh, present the whole the process of the Matisse's work. So anyway, uh, when you explain about the, your work the process, so it reminds the Matisse show. So my question: When you made your work, so when you tear the papers. So that's the, the paper is already wet, or so how you can cut the dirt papers? Other uh, when paper in the wet, in the wet situation, because uh, when it dry, it has so much strength. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. So powerful. That's why I mentioned it's like a capital of Chinese. Look at the soft, but there's a lot, a lot of strength there. Uh, so you have to make this, make it soft, then tear it up. Um, my my process uh, or, 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 or the approach is uh, different. Matisse is trying oh, to make course. an image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My is not try to make an image. It's just uh, try to make a. It's, it's not the image. It's just a feeling, you know. Uh, and uh, it's just what? the feeling. feeling. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's, I I use the paper, just like a people using uh, oil pigment. You know, mix and then you know the, the, the all the small parts make the bigger part. Um, there was a no image actually. I'm not build up an image. I just build up an odor. Uh, Matisse is to try to make the image, make something a uh, beauty of the image. Yeah, but uh, what I mentioned about Matisse's show, I don't want to make a compare, uh, yeah, the kinds of the image of, of your work is different, but just the kinds of the, the process when artists make the, their own, make some shape or you brush some part, uh, some oil painting can you know, fix the sort of act of the, the, some gestures, but uh, normally uh, Asian calligraphy is not changed or you brush some yeah, calligraphy, you can't change. But you do uh, tear the papers, you, you break the order, you can change when you want. 
So uh, the part is something I can only compare with the Marcus Cutter paper. He can move what he wants. That's the processing. So that is more a creative energy. They could uh, rebuild their artworks. So they can make some similarity. Okay. I, I would sort of want to just, ex uh, I have a question, but also just wanted to share my sort of reaction to the sort of conversation going on about the paper. Um, 20 or 30 years ago, I experimented a little bit with Chinese brush painting in Shanghai. And I remember feeling the paper was like trying to conquer a tiger. It was alive. I didn't know it w what it would do because it changed when it was wet when it was dry, when it was mounted, it had many, many characteristics. And I would not know until afterwards. Any, even it changed after you mounted it. So I don't know if that helps explain. It's not something that, in a way, you can start to plan, but it also has its own character. Each piece of paper has its own characteristic, which will change. And then I think the question I wanted to ask is that you said that you paint nothing, you don't pay attention, nothing, nothing, not the outside world comes in. You have your you, uh, looking at tradition, but also then changing what you do. And I was just wondering that you love, you use the word fragment. You love fragments, fragments of paper, fragments of thought. I was wondering what fragments resonate with you when you are in Beijing, in New York. How do they come into your work if they do, or your creative process? I, I think that it's a, a, a very hard question. Because uh, because of the work is not represent, represented, you know, like a, with the image. So the, everything uh, just come naturally. Uh, from the daily life, from uh, the, the way I say things, from uh, maybe uh, today we have here, there was so many, so many attention here, and when, when I do next work, there was something getting into it. Uh, this I, I call it uh, a fragment. Uh, and also I, I play uh, African drum. And uh, the, the, the first time I, I studied uh, a couple years ago, and, uh, <coughs> The beam, the, the 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 rhythm, and and I, I, I didn't know this because I, I grew up with the classical music uh, background, not my my family. Um, then we heard the, the, this boom boom boom, and so when I started painting, it's naturally getting into the artwork, mm. and you see the paper getting jumped. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see the, the the work downstairs. There was a white one, pure white. Uh, uh, in this way, and you see the, the white and the gray, it's different, uh, it's not you know, like other painting, very flat. You see there is a rhythm, you see the jump. Something that is hard to explain, but, but I'm very sensitive about every detail, every day uh, I, I, I experience. Uh, I really um, appreciate uh, my everyday life, um, even though not as Big, but no. Um. I, I want also add uh, one comment because uh, when we for the first time, very interesting that you know, I know he uh, runs jogs uh, jogs every day for yes. five point eight miles every day, right? And every Sunday he play uh, African jambe. Do you know that jambe, the African drum? He's the only Asian to play African drum in the uh, in that park, and then uh, he also. Uh, you know, pr practice. I imagine the practice calligraphy every day, one and a half hours. And uh, he like recite or he wrote, you know, galactic poetry, you know, er every day. Feel so. It's kind of me. Uh, always reminds me the uh, the famous or uh, the renowned the uh, Tang Dynasty poet, poet, and a poet, painter, musician, and calligrapher. One way, but he's the one way living the modern, in the postmodern <laughs> New York. So, <laughs> any other questions? Um, thank you so much for the conversation. It's just been incredibly interesting and, and informative. And um, just a, an observation as someone who does not read calligraphy, 
Um, and when I view uh, calligraphy inspired pieces or poetry, um, or that I think is poetry, um, I always kind of feel a little left out. I'm wondering, you know, what I'm missing or if I'm sort of exoticizing something that really is uh, something very plain. But it also gives me the opportunity to enjoy the pieces more on a holistic level and see the, the papers and um, the process. So I, I'm really delighted to hear that this is um, intentionally sort of a, going towards a more, um, I would say, holistic um, experimentation. And, and thank you again. Uh, if I can respond to that, which I think all of us appreciate what you said. Uh, this is one way of, uh, the major way perhaps, of Weija moving his tradition into the present where we can all feel that sense of wholeness in relation to where he's coming from. Uh, of course, uh, art is very subjective. Uh, uh, no, making... not necessarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not necessary. That's a big discussion. Uh -huh. You can't say that affirmatively unless you really know what you're saying. Okay. Uh, but well, uh, I think well, from your painting, uh, it reminds me of uh, the Buddhist uh, saying that well, when I first see the mountains and the waters, or uh, the mountains and waters is uh, almost a physical realistic, realistic copy of uh, the, the real scene. And then when you take a closer look, the mountains and the waters no longer appear what you, you perceive them. And then, when you really study them hard, you, each one has uh, the mountains and the waters in their own mind. I think it's uh, for, uh, when I say art is, uh, uh, is subjective, I mean that uh, you have to look at uh, the artworks uh, from the perspective of the artist. And I think what well, is uh, sort of uh, a communication is on the metaphysical level. It's above the form and uh, really is. so uh, when you have the fragments of all the calligra calligraphy uh, of your calligraphical works, uh, I think well, because well, when we see the uh, Wang Xizhi, all those uh, we call the the the, the Xing Cao, or the we, we we appreciate the flow, the dynamic, not necessarily the meaning of uh, the calligraphy. Because well, for 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 instance, well, for someone like me who do, who do not have a cultivation in calligraphy, I I cannot read what uh, uh, some of the ancient calligraphers, right? Or even Mother Jones calligraphy, I couldn't read. <laughs> Let me read them word by word. But uh, we can all appreciate that. Uh, I think what well, you are trying to have uh, metaphysical communication with Westerners have to appreciate the essence, the spirit of uh, calligraphy or the Chinese culture. Um, if I may add, I think one of the interesting which I is doing in this really to incorporate and reconcile this collision between cultural heritage and the contemporary consciousness. And with contemporary art, what I appreciate most is about this open ending, this ambiguity, and that he is inviting us as viewer to come in and input our narratives. So I'm not looking at the work and trying to figure out Perhaps if I know the artist, I would imagine, but I'm looking at it to uh, imagine my feelings. His work is invoking or resonates with certain aspects of myself. And by me participating, that adds meaning to the work itself. So it seems to me there is a dialogue going on that makes, to me, the beauty and essence of you know, what we do and many of the contemporary if I can just say, and I apologize if I was rude in making my comment, but I think what you're talking about is aesthetics in terms of how we receive a work of art and how we transpose that feeling 
of reception in relation to what we're seeing, which I think is extremely positive and necessary, and we need more of it, honestly. I would also say that I think art can stand objectively in relation to that subjective experience. It's not always so clear, and certainly a great deal of the theoretics that have happened over the last 30 or 40 years, certainly from the West, are very much in opposition to my position. But I think they're in opposition to my position because we've lost a sense of feeling, and therefore we can't make the distinction in terms of what correct feeling is. This is where I think Confucius is. Yeah, actually, that's what I want, uh, want to ask, uh, which are whether you are painting for want to uh, uh, the, the audience or uh, to appreciate, or just what you want to paint uh, the works you can appreciate yourself or you like it yourself? Um, good question. I really like to talk about this. <laughs> um, when, when our work finished, it's become an object. Okay, it start its own life. Um, then, maybe you <coughs> give it more meaning. Okay, it's finished. It's like a tree in the trees or in the forest or art in the art world. So many art, all different art. But my one, my tree, probably is a unique one. Probably. Okay, so the different people look at the tree, the different uh, understanding, uh, different they, they appreciate, it, but in a different way. <coughs> For instance, uh, instance, probably a carpenter see the tree, good tree, like beautiful. Ah, I can make the good furniture, right? And uh, a biologist maybe look at the tree, they think about, wow, this uh, uh, you know new discovery, and uh, it can be you know uh, you know lots of to to research for his research. Our artist look at the tree and shape, color, form, combination, uh, lots of art artistic things. But uh, the three of them, they all appreciate a tree, one tree, just the one tree. So that means the people give them more meaning to the tree. My work is it's the same, it's just a tree. And finish here. I hope more people, um, you know, can give more meaning to my work, and then can keep this meaning, you know, extend. That's what I think. Um, it, you you talk about the uh, Buddhism Zen. Okay, there's a Zen story. Uh, there's a flag moving, uh, you know, and uh, the, the, the two monks. Uh, they, they argue, young, younger one, they, they argue. It, it says, oh, the, the, the wind move. It's no, it's a flag move. <laughs> and the master came, it's your heart move. Mm -hmm. So that means that Good. I can see this master is the great artist, because it starts from the heart. But also, it's a great understanding of what happened in front of him. So you may all the master to look at my work, and, and my work is just a flag. So you're not intentionally to appease, please. I, I, I did a calligraphy. I, I have this uh, uh, background. I, I, I said I, I break up the order and there was a new order coming. But maybe it's just lead you to Chinese culture, Chinese calligraphy, but not really Chinese calligraphy. There, you don't have to read this, the, then, like a person and a culture, you don't have to read it. Lead you to maybe your interesting stuff. Chinese culture, Chinese art, Chinese calligraphy, Chinese painting from my work. Uh, it's like a, also your mention about the uh, Buddhism. Uh, uh, they have always have a practice. They say, I point off the moon. You don't have to look at my finger. You look at the moon. <laughs> right? So you look at my work, you don't have to exactly the work. There was a much broader thing. You just look at the artwork. Maybe lead you to appreciate 
different art. Yeah, that's what it's. And also, I, I want to uh, respond to John and to Robert and to Weijia about this uh, discussion. I show you're sharp as art critic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're very sharp. And also, uh, but you, you are actually, both of you are on the same common ground, you three, because uh, uh, you mentioned Buddhism philosophy. And uh, I sh actually, in your essay, uh, you mentioned a lot about uh, Wei Jia's uh, Zen manner, right? And also, I compare Wei Jia as Wang Wei, not as Li Bai, not as Du Fu, because Li Bai, what do you call it, uh, Shi Xian, the very man of uh, po poetry, Du Fu, the sage of poetry, but Wang Wei is the Buddhist of poetry. So that's why I think we, we have all have the same common ground. Okay. And this, this is true. Yeah. <laughs> we all have the same common ground. Right? That's what I'm agreeing to. Okay. <laughs> That's why we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, when you see uh, when you see the logo of Nanhai, we're trying to uh, bridge in east and west. I was joking with them. We're not only trying to bridge, you know, the Asia and the United States, Asia and the West countries, but also trying to bridge east coast and west coast. So, thank you very much for this wonderful, you know, enlightening uh, panelist. In the gang of New York, you make very good come out show in a difficult San Francisco. Thank you. <laughs>